Welcome to the Money Focus Podcast. I'm your host, Moses the Mentor. In this episode, I'm joined by a distinguished financial professional. His name is Christopher McKenzie, and he's armed with the MBA and also a deep understanding and expertise of wealth building. And he's here to discuss the transformative powers of financial education, particularly its impact to the black community. So get ready to dive into a conversation that bridges the gap between financial literacy and sustainable wealth creation. So let's go. All right. Thank you, Christopher, for joining the show. Um, I always like to start the show to give my guests the floor to talk a little bit about their career journey and also what inspired you personally to start your career in insurance. So the floor uh, is yours. Once again, Moses, I want to say thank you for inviting me uh, to your show. just to give you a little background about myself and my journey. Originally, I'm born and raised in New Jersey. I transferred down here to uh, Norfolk, Virginia 21 years ago in, uh, because of the Navy. I did uh, 21 years in the Navy. The thing that I, that got me while I was in the ner- Navy, I started reading and I read an article out of Black Enterprise. And this article was pertaining to a young man that's from New Jersey who started his career in connecting venture capitalists with people that wanted to start their businesses and things like that. And so it intrigued me. It intrigued me. And uh, I said, well, okay, well, let me learn a bit about this. And so, uh, you know, I started taking an interest in business. I came out of the military, finished my bachelor's degree in business administration, and then I got my master's in business management. So I started reading books in regards to the stock market, how mutual funds work, blue chip stock, things like that. And that was always an interest of mine. And I I said, wow, you know, this is something that I really would like to get into and, and learn more. But I, at that time, I did not know that the at the base of all of that is insurance. So once I started learning that insurance was the base of all of this investment, I said, well, let me learn more about insurance. So I looked for means and ways to learn about insurance, and I found that, and uh, I started studying up on insurance and how insurance works. And I said, wow, you know, there's so much to this that, you know, I I want to learn and I want to be able to pass on to other people and educate them. And uh, w- one of the things that I found out that was really interesting to me, that insurance, you transfer risk. Expand on that a little bit. Like what role does insurance play in um, personal financial oh, planning? Uh, that's a good question because what I found that in establishing a financial foundation, insurance is one of the cornerstones. Okay. And most people may or may not know this, but insurance, if it has a cash value part of it, it gives you the opportunity to be able to build upon it. Right. And many, many, many uh, millionaires, successful people have used insurance to their benefit. And one of those people that come to mind is Walt Disney. He had several different policies on him and he was able to use that as a means to borrow against to build Disney World, Disneyland, okay, to build his empire. Uh, Ray Kroc is another one. Sam Walton is another one. So insurance becomes not just death benefit, but there's more to insurance than we know. And because we we are able to use that insurance to fund many different avenues, you can build on top of it. Right? That means in a way is to create generational wealth. So insurance becomes the one of the cornerstones that you need to be able to build a financial foundation with. Like when I hear life insurance or just insurance, I'm thinking of it as a death benefit, something that I can, I won't personally get the opportunity to enjoy 
but my family will be financially stable mm -hmm. in my absence. So can you kind of talk a little bit about like some of the strategies that can you can advocate for that will build wealth, maybe alongside life insurance? Uh, one of the strategies that comes to mind that is currently being used is the IUL, is Index Universal Life. And with the Index Universal Life policy, like I said, it allows you to have the death benefit, but it also provides you with a means and a ways to protect your money from taxes, right? There's a tax code that is used an insurance called the IRC 7702A. And this code makes insurance, life insurance, non taxable. Okay? So it's tax free. So now with the index market, you're able to go into the marketplace, receive a rate of return. Okay? And if the market was to go down, your rate of return is still protected you're locked in so now if that rate of return goes up that's great you're still protected and you're locked in at the new interest rate but if the market was to go down it wouldn't affect you okay so you get all the highs and none of the lows in the index market okay now Many of us don't even know about the index market. So we look at some other strategies that we use, like your whole life policies out there. And, and people use that insurance to uh, have the protection of the, you know, with the death benefit and everything. And there is some uh, cash accumulation, but the interest rate is set by the insurance company. Okay. Whereas in the index market, the insurance, the rate of return is directed by the market itself. So you can use either one of these strategies to accumulate cash value, but it is in the IUL, the index market, that you can get the best value for your money. Okay. And because of the IRC 7702, your monies are protected from taxes. Many of the, uh, the poor in the middle class never heard of the 7702. They don't know what the 7702 is and let alone know what it can do for you. So understanding that tax code and understanding how that strategy or those strategies work puts you at a vantage point more so than you would ever have with a savings account, money market account, or even a certificate of deposit. So those are some of the strategies that I recommend the foundation that you need or the monies that you want to accumulate. And you can use that monies towards retirement as a retirement supplement. You can use it for travel. You can use it for, you know, saving for college uh, for your kids, whatever it is that you, you, you so desire, you can use that money that you're accumulating in your cash value to be able to do that. I had no clue. I had no clue. I'm definitely going to have to tap into that and learn more. So I appreciate the breakdown. The first time you and I talked, we, we, we shared a passion about financial education mm -hmm. overall, but also in particular about financial education in the black community. So I wanted to ask you a few questions to, you know, ignite a dialogue about this because it's something that I hold near to my heart. So can you discuss in your own opinion, the state of financial literacy in the black community? I appreciate that that question uh, because that is something that is dear and near to my heart. Um, you know, we we as a, a community overall, we are very concerned about helping others. Okay, unfortunately, many are not concerned about helping us. So there's a lot of knowledge that bypasses the black community, and because that knowledge bypasses the black community we don't often make good decisions financial decisions and because we don't make the right decisions financially uh, we have a great deal more of debt and uh, we have more problems in the black community than other communities would have 
give you a prime example of that. Right now we have an election that's coming up and most of the politicians, of course, they want our vote. They look for our vote and they will make promises to us in regards to our vote and how that would benefit us if they get elected. Problem with that is, is that when they get elected, they forget about us. And the reason being is because there is no economic power behind our vote. And because we don't understand that, we vote for those who we think will serve our interests the best, but once they get in office, they receive what they want, but then they forget about what we want. But to ensure that we have more power behind it, we have to establish an economic base. And the only way we can do that is to gain more knowledge financially. What does your dollar mean to you? Okay. And, and unfortunately, we don't have anybody coming in in our community and that's educating us on a, on a, on a mass scale. Okay. I was, uh, I was just talking to a friend of mine today and I was saying that if you belong to a church and they don't make financial education a part or a program in that church, you might want to look at another church because we got to understand this power in your dollar. If we don't understand how to make that dollar go to work for us, then we're always going to be behind and we're always going to be in that position of trying to catch up. Now, the way we can help in this is that we have to really put an emphasis on reading. We have to read. We have to get out there and read books that pertain to us and how to make our monies go to work for us. We need to focus in on those things that are going to help us. And one of the things that I think would definitely help us is if we gain a better understanding of our finances and how our finances can work for us instead of against us. I heard on an average over $1.3 trillion comes out of the black community every year. But when you go into the black community, where's your evidence of this? Where's your where, where's your proof? Right. Yeah. The money leaves. Yeah. The, so if if there's no proof, as it says in the scripture, you judge a tree by the fruit it bears. If there's no fruit, then what are you talking about? Okay. We, we, you, you do nothing. You have nothing. You own nothing. So many of us are going to school. We're getting the college educations and, and everything, college degrees, right? But when you come out of college, you're looking for a job. You're looking uh, for that job that's going to pay you a, a good salary. And unfortunately, those jobs are few and in between. So everybody's not going to get that good paying job, okay? And, when, and that's some of the reality that we have to accept. And, and, and the only thing is, is we're not creating the jobs to be able to satisfy that need. You, you, you know, you went to school for uh, phys, physical education, okay? Well, the school didn't hire you right away. So you don't work as a, a phys ed teacher. But you got to get a job, so you end up taking a job at Family Dollar. So that's where you know we come in at and we educate people and we show them how they can manage even with the little bit that they have and make it go a long way. You don't know because nobody's educating you to that. Okay, and it's unfortunate because we're saying we are now educated. And we know, but the proof is in the pudding. You don't know. You don't know. And because you don't know, yeah. you don't grow. So come on, let's face the reality. Let's accept the truth about things. It's not about hating or disliking somebody. We're just talking real facts. We're talking real facts. You know, 
for me and my platform, it's really about financial education, right? Like that's my passion. I want to be able to give people options with their money, right. and help them understand how money works and how right. it can work for you. So what what I'm ultimately hoping to provide for people is to give them uh, some foundational knowledge that will help gotcha. them move forward. You know, things like understanding inflation, understanding how interest rates work. Like, so in your in your mind, are there some foundational things that you might teach your clients or people that reach out to you Definitely. In, a, oh. um, in a mentor capacity just to say, hey, you know, um, how, how can I actually do better with money? Are there some foundational things that you actually would say, hey, focus yes. on this first? One of, the, one of the things that I ask uh, some of my clients first, I I try to simplify it as best I can. And I ask them if they ever played a game of Monopoly. And a lot of them, you know, they, they like the game and they played the game. And, uh, you know, they thought the game was good. And then some didn't like it because it was too long or they didn't know all the rules. And one of the things that I educate people to is the rules of the game. And and like I say to them, you know, hey, you are playing this game and sometimes you might play the game with people that don't know any of the rules. You might play the game with people that know some of the rules. But when you play the game with people that know all the rules, how do you know when they're cheating you or not? Okay. And the response always comes back with, you don't know exactly. So we educate them in regards to one of the rules of the game. And one of those rules is the rule of 72. Okay. And how compound interest can work for you. Okay. If you learn it. And it could work against you if you don't learn it. So give you a prime example, if you have a savings account right now and that savings account is paying you less than 1% and just for all uh, intents and purposes, let's just say it pays you 1%, okay? Well, the, the rule of 72 was discovered by Albert Einstein and he said it like this. He said, if you take the number 72 and, times it, and divide it by the rate of return equals the number of years it takes for your money to double. So if you got a rate of return of 1% and you took 72 and divided it by that 1%, it would equal 72 years. Now, I don't know about you, Moses. I don't know about any of your audience. I don't think any of us got 72 years to wait for a dollar to turn into 72 years. Okay, right, so right. you got to look for a rate of return that's going to give you uh, the amount that you're looking for, right? So we could look at a rate of return that's, that's let's say, 4%. That's going to give you 18 years. Well, that's not good. It's okay, but it's not good, All right? Then we might look at a rate of return that's going to give, take 72 divided by 8, let's say, that's going to give us nine years. It's a little better, right? But we want that rate of return that's going to give us the biggest bang for our buck, and that is 72 divided by the rate of return of 12% equals six years. So every six years, your money doubles. And if and that's what you want. You, yes, you want your money to <laughs> double, go to work for right. you, building for you, okay? So by the time you're retire, at retirement age, you got enough to retire on and then build something, build on top of that. So the bigger the, the rate of return, the less amount of time it takes for your money to double. And that's just one of the basic rules that you learn in uh, getting better financial education. I appreciate that. And you breaking it down, you know, because again, people hear these rules, they might have heard it in an academic setting and studied it for a test. And then once that class was over, they, they, they never applied it in their life. But um, yeah, and that's key, you know, so we want to make these, uh, you know, financial principles very relatable. 
Um, and because they're not really difficult to understand. You just have to make them fit exactly. within your life because you're just so programmed to, especially for someone as a college student, hey, you go to college, you pass, I'm looking to get a job so I can make this money, get me my own place, get a car, all the, all the things that really set you up really for a lifetime right. of right. debt. You know, so if you're if you're not applying, if you're not applying your financial education that you've been exposed to, then you're just falling, you're falling right into, into the trap. trap. You're not really prospering exactly. at all. Okay. So one of the things that you you have to do is you have to start thinking about money in a different way. And you have to start talking about money in a different way. All right. If 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 you're going around and you've been going around for years and saying, I'm broke, I'm broke, I'm broke. Guess what you are? You're broke. So you have a broke mindset. And that led me to understand, oh, so when you have a mindset of lack, you don't see any possibilities. You don't see any opportunities. You don't see anything because your mind has been trained to always look at the shortage. I don't have enough. So you have a mindset of scarcity. I can't afford this. I can't afford that. I can't do this. I can't do that. So once you have that mindset, it's hard for you to move forward because you already locked yourself down into scarcity. But then when you are ready to make that transition from scarcity to increase, once you transition into increase, now your mind is open to new possibilities, new opportunities. OK, and I often say it like this, uh, there's a scripture in the, in the Bible where Jesus is feeding the multitude and he has two loaves of bread and five fish. And if he had a mindset of lack, he would have told the disciples, this is not enough. This is not going to do it. I, I need y'all to go get some more, get more food, get this, you know, and when with that mindset. No, he would have never been able to feed the multitude. But because he had a mindset of increase, see, and this is this is valuable because you know when you see that little is much in a master's hand. So it doesn't take a whole lot. It just takes what you got. And what are your priorities? Where are your priorities set? See? Because at the, at the end of the month, when you sit back and you add it all up, you're praying that nothing outside of the norm comes along to disrupt what you got. So if you're, you know, you don't pay the bills and everything, and you just made it through the month. But right there at the beginning of the next month, the car breaks down. But you don't have any money to do anything about it now what when you talk about cars um that's a classic example of how people you know that have lacked the financial education they i don't know if you've seen this to where like if someone has a car mm -hmm. repair right they'll take their car mm -hmm. to the shop and the car repair place says something you know that might be high for them let's just say it's a thousand dollars repair to yes. repair the vehicle yes right a lot of times I've seen people say, hey, you know what? I'm sick of this car. I'm just going to go to the dealership and get me a new car. And they, they go to the new the, the dealership and they say, well, why, you know, spend a thousand dollars to fix this car when I could put a thousand dollars down to get me a car mm -hmm. right off the lot? Mm -hmm. And it just starts the cycle over and oh, over really? again, because that one car that you just yeah, you, that one car that you said I'm not going to fix didn't have right. a car note, and now you're taking, you're taking pictures saying, you know, oh, I got a new car, but no, I mean you, 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 you failed to pay a thousand dollars, but now you're paying a five hundred dollar exactly. car note. So literally in two months, <laughs> you're at the same place, and and the car is getting you from point A to point B. So really being in a position to maintain a car and making the best financial decision at times to say, hey, I'm just going to go ahead and pay for this car right. to get fixed 
and have access to that money to take care of those emergencies is the better financial right. decision. And I'm speaking right. from experience. My car has almost 300,000 mm -hmm. miles on it. And I plan on driving it until mm -hmm. the wheels fall off because I've had no car note for over, mm -hmm. over five years. You know, it's just something that it saves a lot of money, money mm -hmm. month over month. And uh, I'm just a big proponent of no car note. Whatever, mm -hmm. wherever possible, mm -hmm. I, I definitely mm -hmm. think it makes and, sense. And, 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 and I, I can understand yep. that. And, uh, you know, that's how most most successful people will think. It's like, look, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Leave it alone. But what happens with most of us, yes. and this is no slant on anyone, and I don't want anyone to take it personally. But I want you to think. I just want you to think. Okay, you're 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 praying to God and you're asking God for a, a, a means and a way to get to work. So you want a new car. You're asking God for a new car. Okay, remember one thing: when God gives you a vision, He's already made provisions for that vision. Okay, He's already made provisions for that. However, when you go and you get a car. You know, and you, 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 quick to come back and say, "Well, God bless me. God bless me." Okay, got you. However, but whatever God blesses you with, it does not become a struggle for you. It does not become uh, something that's working against you. It's working for you. Okay. And so what I found is that when God blesses you with something, as I said, He's already made provisions for you. So now that is not a struggle for you. You're not struggling with that car payment. You're not struggling uh, with that house payment. It's something within your means. You can afford this. The scripture says, count up the cost. Count the cost. Okay? So that means you got to sit down and, and look at where you are. And if you can't afford a $600, $700, $800 a month car payment, why are you getting that car? Why are you doing that to yourself? But then, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You want to say, God bless you. He didn't bless you to be stupid. He said, you, you know, use what you got. He said, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. So before you go sign anything, always, number one, check with God. Number two, seek wise counsel. Hello. All right. Seek wise counsel. And so in seeking wise counsel, that means you take your time. Because if you can't afford that car note, all right, and you miss one, two, or three payments on that car, what's going to happen to that car? They're coming to take it back from you. Okay? So now right. you got bad credit. You got a repo on your hands, okay? And so What's the next step? You're going to file bankruptcy. But all this can be avoided if you took your time and, and, and thought out wise counsel. So a new car might not be what you need. You might need a, a workable, usable, used vehicle. So that means you got to know somebody in that field that could go down Take a look at the car for you. Tell you what, hey, this is, is a good deal. This is good. An alternate is good. This is good. That's good. Whatever's good on the car, they'll tell you. If they tell you, you know, if they really got your best interest at heart and they tell you, no, that's not a good deal. What we try to do is we try to figure it out on our own. And when we try to figure it out on our own is where we go wrong. So we don't look at the overall picture. Yeah, okay, you had that you had that car. You had that car for a number of years, but it's still doing what you want it to do to get you from point A to point B. If you're taking care of that car, that car is gonna take care of you. You're up on the maintenance, you know what the uh maintenance schedule is, you clean it, you wash it, you clean the inside of the car. Sometimes you won't even know that that's a used car. See, so there's got to be wisdom in this. Yeah. Take what take care of it, and it'll take yeah. care of you. Now that money that you're saving on that car note, that's not money to go and and, and buy new shoes and uh, a purse and 
take a cruise and nothing like that. That's money that you put to work for you. So then when you get to be 55, you're not looking at, well, man, what am I going to do for retirement, man? I ain't got nothing saved up. When you got all your retirement saved up from that money that you didn't have to use to pay for that car note. You see, it's easier once you learn, once you understand. It's harder when you don't put nothing in motion. You don't put anything in play. You know? So if you're not being a good steward over your money, your money is not going to take care of you. So you have to, you have to learn. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot to get started. It's very little to get started, but here's the key word. Here's the key word, Moses, discipline. If you're not disciplined in this, I, agree. I don't care what you know. I don't care what you do. You're not going to succeed at it. You got to be disciplined. And then this, the next word is consistent. You got to consistently put money to work for you. I definitely feel like discipline and consistency, you know, and people that are successful in in different areas of life, you know, they they can attest to that. So I always use the example of someone right. who's in shape, right. right? If someone's in shape, they are disciplined in the gym, disciplined what they eat, they, they're consistent with their workout, consistent with their diet. And as a result of that, they, you know, six pack, you know, exactly. big muscles, you know, better, better stamina. So that it can it can be applied in different areas. So the, the people that can do uh, apply that discipline and consistency in one area and be successful, you have to do the same thing when it comes same. to your finances. Same you have to do the same thing. You can't just be, yeah, you can't just can't be lackluster with it. You got to go go for broke because otherwise you're going to set yourself up for uh, a, right. a huge hurdle. And we gave the example of cars, but there's many examples, people that, you know, uh, have a house right. that they can't afford, you know, and or people that choose to rent and not purchase a, a home at some point exactly. in their life. So it's a it's a laundry list of things that obviously we all have, you know, time for in right. this uh, episode. But really getting that foundational knowledge yeah. is so key. And really, when you get money, don't think the first thing you want to do is spend it. You think about exactly. multiplying your money, exactly. you know, growing your real, money. Real quick, That's I'm, gonna, I'm just going to add this in there mm -hmm. real quick uh, as, as in regards to my in-laws, okay? When they bought their house, they had a foundational house that they built on, okay? And I don't know exactly how much it cost, but it wasn't uh, uh, as much as these houses that you have out here today, the ones that are being built. This house was built some years ago, all right? And when they bought it, I think they only had maybe uh, two or three or three bedrooms in there. Okay. They now have about five. No, excuse me, six bedrooms. A family room, a living room, eating. I, I mean, they just has built on top of that home to where it's worth more than it ever was when they first got it. So the point is is you start where you are and stop trying to live up to what the Joneses are doing. You build where you are and you go from there. The Joneses really, a lot of times yeah. don't have it anyway. So you, you're, you're, trying exactly. to, <laughs> you're trying to get to somewhere that exactly. you don't want to be at, trust exactly. me. Yeah, so. they say the grass uh. is always greener on the other side until you get there and realize it's crabgrass, right? That's very her. true, very true. What final thoughts or advice and in or advice that you would like to give to the audience? And also, before we go, um, go ahead and, and let us know that how we can actually reach you. You know, if we want to, you know, reach out to you, please give your contact information, social media, so the audience can tap into you and learn sure, more not about a insurance. Problem, not a problem. Uh, my final notes uh, on this is, you know, 
everybody's got to start somewhere and as as i said we all have a genesis all right and sometimes our genesis don't always look pretty they don't always look the way we think they should look it's in just getting started and how we are talking to ourselves to god to the environment around us how we are talking if you're continuously talking down and negative to yourself and then talking to others around you in that same negative voice you can't expect that that plant to grow you can't expect anything come uh, that's good that's to come out of that so you have to you have to start changing your thought process the bible says right and all thy gaining gain understanding right and then it also says you know be not conformed to this world but be be transformed in the renewing of your mind so you have to change your thought process and if you're not going to change your thought process you're not going to read books outside of the classroom you're not going to study uh, the field that you're in you're just going to win uh, live life on on the whim you're just gonna if it works out for me great if it don't I'll, I'll try something else i'll try something else well before you know it hey man you in your 60s and 70s and it's time to retire and you have nothing in place so get out of the that mindset of lack step up into the mindset of increase be ready to invest in yourself be ready to Put your work, your money to work for you, all right? And continuously want to better yourself every day, every day. So that's that's what I have to share with you on the closing notes. All right. Be blessed and be safe. Okay. And you can reach me if you so desire. You can reach me at 757-579-0584 is my number. You can call me. Or you can reach me via email, cmac6179 at gmail.com. All right, Moses, you got it. Thank you, Chris, for, you know, jumping on the show with me and sharing your expertise and experience. Really appreciate it. Uh, we both share uh, a strong passion and desire for financial education in the black community. And uh, I just really appreciate you, you know, uh, sharing your thoughts on that. So good luck to you and everything that you do. And I look forward to having you back on the show in another time. Uh, to my listeners, please don't forget to check out MosesTheMentor.com. It's a valuable resource. And at the same time, check out my YouTube channel, Moses the Mentor, for more episodes just like this. So until next time, stay financially focused and empowered into your journey. Peace.